Welcome back to Hungry for History. Have you had Tang Yuan before? In Chinese, Tang Yuan literally translates to soup balls. They are balls made of glutinous rice flour stuffed with a variety of flavorful fillings. It is a traditional Chinese dessert that is usually available all year round. You can get them from street vendors, restaurants, and grocery stores in China, but no Chinese New Year celebration is complete without it. The Chinese Lunar New Year is a 15-day celebration. This year, it starts on February 12th and ends on the 26th. Tang Yuan is usually consumed on the last day, which is celebrated as the Yuan Xiao Festival. In Chinese, Yuan means first, the first month, and Xiao means evening. Together, Yuan Xiao means the first night of the year when the moon is full. In today's video, I'm bringing you a brief history of Tang Yuan and the Lantern Festival. I'm also going to show you how to make two flavors of the glutinous rice balls. Let's get it started! What is the Yuan Xiao Festival? As I mentioned in the introduction, the Yuan Xiao Festival is regarded as the end of the whole Chinese New Year season. On that night, people admire the first full moon in the new year. Today, its main goal is to celebrate the new year with more food and more entertainment. Origins of the Yuan Xiao Festival are unclear. Some scholars believe the festival originated from worshipping Tai Yi, who was regarded as the supreme god of heaven by people in the Bronze Age in China. Some attributed it to the Emperor Ming of the Han Dynasty. After the Emperor heard that monks in India gathered on the 15th day of the first lunar month to worship Buddha, he ordered that lanterns should be lit in his palace and in the temples for the Buddha on the first full moon of the year. Therefore, the festival is also called the Lantern Festival. Historical records suggest that the tradition of public lantern display in the evening of the 15th day of the first moon was established in the late Sui Dynasty during the reign of Emperor Yang. He invited envoys from neighboring countries to the capital to enjoy all kinds of shows during the New Year celebration, including the spectacular lamplight ceremony. People use available resources like paper, silk, and bamboo to make lanterns. They came in different shapes, colors, and sizes, like embroidered globes, animals, flowers, and the mythical creatures. The display of elaborate lanterns was the main attraction of the festival. The Yuan Xiao Festival was also known as the Shangyuan Festival during the Tang Dynasty, when Taoism was a state religion. According to Taoism, a Chinese religion and philosophy, Shangyuan Festival was dedicated to celebrating the first day of Tianguan, the god in charge of heaven who bestows happiness and fortune. During the Tang Dynasty, the festival was extended into a three-day celebration and became one of the largest social activities throughout the empire. In the capital city of Chang'an, thousands of lamps and tens of thousands of torches illuminated the whole city. Light and curfews were lifted so that commoners and nobility alike could enjoy the ceremonies. On this night, young women who were usually confined to their home were allowed to go out and stay late viewing the lantern display. The festival also provided a romantic lantern lit environment for young people to meet and make their first impression on each other. So in classic Chinese literature, many a love story begins on this day of the year's first full moon. This tradition of public lantern display was kept and was enlarged upon by the emperors of later dynasties. The Ming dynasty extended it to 10 days and more activities were added to the celebration. This painting by an imperial court painter in 1485 depicts how one of the Ming emperors celebrated Yuan Xiao with his family and court officials. There are a lot of activities including acrobatic performances, lantern parades, land boat dances, and setting of firecrackers. One of the questions you can ask a Chinese person for the sake of starting a debate is do you think Tang Yuan should be sweet or savory? The sweet Tang Yuan fillings are usually made with sugar, sesame seeds, peanuts, tangerine peel, or rose petals. 
savory fillings are made with meats and vegetables. I like sweet tom yam, especially with fillings made of sesame seeds and sugar. But my mom likes savory tom yam made with minced pork and pickled mustard leaves. We all claim that our preference is the authentic taste of tom yam. A taste war about the authentic flavor of tom yam has already broken out on the internet. Some people, especially those who live in the southeast of China, argue that a bowl of savory pork stuffed tang yuan is one of the world's best treats. Many people north of the Yangtze River prefer sweet feelings. It should only be sweet according to them because it symbolizes sweetness in life, not savory, not salty, which they call heretical. The earliest record of eating glutinous rice balls on the 15th day of the first lunar month dates back to the Song Dynasty in the 10th century CE. When the Song Dynasty had its capital in the city of Kaifeng in today's Hebei province, there was a new dessert that was in vogue. It was called Fu Yuanzi, which means floating balls in English, because the glutinous rice balls float up and down in boiling water. There were a few varieties of those glutinous rice balls. Some were only made of glutinous rice flour without any fillings. They were served in water flavored with sugar or fragments of menthol, blossoms, and honey. Some had fillings made with red or green bean paste called Sha Tuan. I found a recipe on making Sha Tuan created by a female chef named Mrs. Wu in her unpublished manuscript Mrs. Wu's Records from the Kitchen. She suggested boiling green beans or red beans with sugar into thick paste, wrap the paste with glutinous rice flour dough, and then steam or boil in water. A number of Song Dynasty scholars and writers have written descriptions of Tang Yuan with sweet fillings or served in sweet liquid, but none of them made any reference to savory Tang Yuan. In the Ming Dynasty, those glutinous rice balls were also called Yuan Xiao, named after the festival. In an unofficial history of the Ming Dynasty called Palace History of the Ming, its author Liu Ruoyu, who was a chief eunuch at the royal palace, records how the royal family celebrate the Chinese New Year. During the celebration of popular snack food among the royal families and the court officials was Yuan Xiao. But the way of making Yuan Xiao is slightly different from Tang Yuan. Instead of wrapping the fillings inside the glutinous rice dough, People place round balls of the chosen filling in a bamboo basket with glutinous rice flour and roll them around while continuously sprinkling water so that the flour stick to the filling balls. Liu also states that people in the south of the lower reaches of the Yangtze River called those glutinous rice balls Tang Yuan. During the Qin Dynasty, sweet fillings became the standard for Yuan Xiao in northern China, while southerners developed a variety of filling flavors. Pork, chicken, and vegetables were used to make savory fillings. Scholar Yuan Mei recorded a savory Tang Yuan recipe in his 1792 gastronomic menu and cookbook, the Sui Yuan Shi Dan. Yuan Mei had a very interesting life. He became a high ranking official at the age of 23, but resigned from office at age 33. After that, he returned to his hometown and lived the rest of his life as an artist, poet, and a gourmet. We will have an episode about Yuan Mei and his cookbook menu later this year. Last year, we made a mooncake recipe from the book in a previous episode. The video link is here if you are interested and wanted to watch it. Yuan Mei was born and grew up in Hangzhou, Zhejiang, where both savory and sweet Tang Yuan were popular. No wonder his Tang Yuan recipe shows how to make a sweet filling and a savory filling. Quote, when using glutinous rice flour to make Tang Yuan, the final product is incredibly smooth and fine. Fill the glutinous rice dough with pine nuts, walnuts, lard, and sugar, or use tender pork with tendons removed, which was finely minced, and mixed with chopped green onions and soy sauce, unquote. Let's start with making the fillings. To make the sweet filling, you need half a cup of walnuts, one eighth a cup of pine nuts, one and a half tablespoon lard, three tablespoon sugar. In a shallow pan, toast the walnuts over low heat for five minutes, pine nuts for three minutes. Set them aside and let them cool before use. When the nuts are completely cool, add them to a food processor and pulse a few times until they become coarse powder. Place the powder in a bowl and add in the sugar, lard, and a pinch of salt. Mix together the ingredients and divide them into 12 balls. 
Keep them in a freezer until the dough is ready to use. Next is to make the savory filling. You need 100 grams of ground pork, one stalk of green onion, one tablespoon of soy sauce. In a small bowl, add in chopped green onion, the ground pork, and one tablespoon soy sauce. Stir to mix everything into a meat paste. Let it marinate in the fridge before use. After the filling has been prepared, it's time to make the Tang Yuan dough. To make the dough, you need 2 cups of glutinous rice flour, 1 cup of warm water in a large mixing bowl. Add the glutinous rice flour. Make a wheel in the center of the flour. Slowly add the warm water and stir with a spatula until there is no dry flour left. A slow and careful progress can help prevent oversaturation of the dough with water. Knead with your hand until the dough is no longer sticky. Shape the dough into a long row. Divide it into two. Work with one half at a time while keeping the other covered with a damp towel. Then divide the dough into 12 parts. Round each one into a bowl and place them on a plate. Cover them with a damp towel to prevent from drying. Repeat with the other portion of the dough. Next step is to make the balls. Let's start with wrapping the sweet filling. Take the filling out of the freezer. Take one dough ball and make an indent with your thumb. With a swirling and pulling motion, create a mini wheel in the dough. Add in the filling and gently pull the remaining dough upwards to fully wrap it around. Roll it gently between your palms to make a smooth round ball. Place them on a surface dusted with rice flour until you are ready to cook them. Apply the same method to wrap the savory filling. Since the filling is somewhat soft, use a fork or spoon to place the meat into the dough. Gently close the edges and gently roll the tang yuan between your palms to shape it into a round ball. After we wrapped all the tang yuan filling, it's time for us to cook the tang yuan. Cook the sweet and savory tang yuan separately since the sweet ones take less time than the savory ones. Fill a pot with water and bring to a boil. Add the tang yuan and gently stir to prevent sticking at the bottom of the pot. Turn to medium heat, cook the sweet tang yuan for about 10 minutes and the savory ones for about 15 minutes. When the tang yuan balls start to flow to the surface of the water, cook for another minute. Then take them out and serve them warm. It's time for us to try out the tang yuan. Uh, we have the sweet ones on my left hand and the savory ones on my right hand. Uh, which one do you want to try first? How about the sweet since that's your favorite? Okay, good deal. Let me start with the sweet ones. Alright. Cheers. Cheers. The skin is very soft and smooth, and the sugar and the fragrance not fitting brings very well together. What do you think? I definitely agree with the, the smooth, uh, and I would say uh, chewy exterior. Inside was a nutty, salty, and sweet surprise. Do you want to try the thorough enough? Yes. Oh, this one is more, feels like the skin is more chewy. Comparing to the sweet one, the silver ones, like the filling, is more dense. And I would also say that the exterior is a little sticky, mm -hmm. and that's probably uh, due to the required uh, extra cook time that it takes to boil in order to fully cook the meat. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, I really enjoy the salty pork and onion core of it. So you like the savory ones more than the sweet ones? I'm gonna say I I am a, a bit more of a fan of the savory than I am the sweet. But so I you really, and my mom on the same team now. <laughs> you know, I've got to agree with your mom that the the savory is what I prefer. But I also have the sweet too, and can appreciate that as well. Maybe I can help unify <laughs> the divide. Actually, I think the savory ones taste really good this time. I mean, I don't mind like making them once in a while, but I think the sweet ones are always my preference. Thank you for watching our video today. That's all I have for you. I hope you have a happy Yuan Shao Festival if you celebrate it. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like today's content.
Uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below if you try out the recipe and if you enjoyed it, or if you just hated it and can't stand it. <laughs> let us know what that is. And if you think that savory is the way and sweet is terrible, let us know where you stand. Do you want sweet or do you want savory? We need to know. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.